Hello everyone and welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul. Today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and overview of this new video card from Galaxy. It features the GeForce GTX 780 in a full custom design. This is the Galaxy GeForce GTX 780 Hall of Fame Edition. We'll start off with a look at the retail box. Apart from the Hall of Fame Edition, you might notice that white is a bit of a theme of this card as well. It's got a custom white PCB. GeForce GTX 780 for the GPU that is uh, based on the same GK110 or a deriv derivation of the GK1 GPU that's used in the GeForce GTX Titan which is kind of the king of the crop when it comes to single GPU video cards at the time of the filming of this video. 780, however, does take a lot of cues from that card, including, for example, uh, the number of CUDA cores, 2,304, uh, as well as GPU, bo GPU Boost 2.0 technology. Uh, but this card specifically has a 3 gigabyte frame buffer, so you get 3 gigs uh, of, of GDDR5 memory, a three-year extended warranty from Galaxy, uh, also a, a, a pretty simple fix that they've done with the air bracket, but they've made the gaps a little bit bigger for increased airflow out of there. Uh, Two-fan custom cooling design, uh, you do get uh, support for three uh, displays for gaming plus a companion display for web browsing and that sort of thing if you're using the other three for 3D gaming. And then of course this card is designed for overclocking, and uh, actually we first encountered this card when we were at Computex this year and uh, they were already setting some benchmarking records on it at that event. Okay, some more information here on the back. Highest frequency possible. Take, take that as you will. Uh, but Galaxy's Hall of Fame Edition is built with only the most select chips. So basically they're saying they are binning their GPUs. They're making sure that the GPUs in these are able to achieve extremely high overclocks. Now, uh, this would probably be a good point for me to talk about the frequency that this GPU is going to run at outside of the box. Um, the base clock and boost clock for a standard GTX 780 is 863 and 900 megahertz, respectively. The base clock on this one is 1006 megahertz, and the boost clock is 1058 megahertz. And I did double check uh, the uh, product page for this on Newegg, and I saw one of our recent commenters stating that out of the box with GPU Boost 2.0, uh, you're actually going to get uh, up to 1110 megahertz right out of the box without doing anything. Pretty cool. Uh, you can also, of course, uh, use uh, uh, overclocking software to push beyond that. Again, with GPU Boost 2.0, you can set a temperature target, uh, and then you, uh, it will automatically over the car overclock the card based on that. It's a pretty cool and effective way to do overclocking. Born for overclocking, this one again, um, just like me, right? Okay. Premium cooling again with the custom designed uh, cooler from, from uh, Galaxy. Uh, they're using uh, international rectifier uh, uh, digital power delivery components premium components used in the PCB for power delivery, and a white PCB, which is quite unique. You don't see that very often. Uh, some more marketing information over here on the right side about maximizing your performance, smoother gameplay, uh, enhanced visuals, uh, and then you can also use Galaxy's own overclocking software. That's the Extreme Tuner Plus, uh, so you can download that from the Galaxy website. You can use that to play around with the overclocking features of this card. And one last point on the box here I wanted uh, to point out. you got key features listed here. Those are from NVIDIA. So, for example, this card is shield ready. If you have a shield, you can stream your video directly to uh, your shield from this card and play uh, your high-end uh, PC titles on a handheld gaming device. Also, the NVIDIA technologies here like TXAA and FXAA, GPU Boost 2.0, uh, physics technology, adaptive V-Sync, NVIDIA surround, all supported, of course. Uh, and then of, uh, I did want to point out minimum system, requir system requirements. Galaxy is recommending a 600 watt or greater system power supply for this card with a minimum 12 volt current rating of 42 amps. So make sure you've got the power supply to push the juice to this card that it needs. Taking a look inside the retail box, we have yet another box. Uh, in here we have some information from Galaxy, simply letting you know that they'd like for you to contact them if you have any issues with the card. You've got the tech support information listed off right there. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Here is the 780 Hall of Fame Edition card itself. We're going to take a closer look at that after we've gone over the rest of the accessories. Ooh, a door hanger. Substantial door hanger right here. Overclocking under progress. Do not disturb. And game in progress. Do not disturb. Doesn't matter which way you put it, you don't want to be disturbed. A little dude down there playing games with a handheld controller. Okay, apart from that, my goodness, look at this. This is an interesting add-on. It's like a little fold-up robot thing. That's kind of cool. All right, there you go. All right, so you can, you can punch all these out and you fold them all up and it's got the little insert tab A into slot B and all that good stuff and you can make yourself a little Hall of Fame. Oh, I, I see, I had it upside down. See, it's a head and a body and the Hall of Fame is like a a mohawk kind of thing. Anyway, 
Interesting add-on. That's unique. I've never seen something like that added in with the, the graphics card, but hey, why not, right? Okay, apart from that, uh, some of the more standard accessories here. DVI to VGA adapter, which you seem to get with every video card you ever purchase, and you should not use with this card. I'm just saying that. I'm just going to say it. Well, you can use it, but it's not recommended. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, you also get a couple uh, adapters. These are simply a couple Molex plugs from an older power supply uh, that you can uh, adapt over to an 8-pin PCI Express graphics connector. You get two of those. Uh, again, only use these if your power supply meets the requirements listed by Galaxy and NVIDIA for this card. All right, uh, this is the remainder of the accessories. So a Hall of Fame Edition graphics card driver installation disk. Don't use this disk. Go to the NVIDIA website and download the latest drivers that they've updated. Uh, also, your Hall of Fame user's manual. And if, you, if you look at this with the light, which I had like a second ago. Ah, oh, where did it go? Where did it go? Oh, you can kind of see it right there. Anyway, okay, that's just some printing elements. That's on the outside of the box as well. Uh, table of contents, walkthrough of installation procedures and that sort of thing. Uh, oh, check this out. Congratulations on purchasing the world's fastest air-cooled GTX 780 to date, featuring Galaxy Hyperboost. That's that little button you push right there in the back. Press the Hyperboost button uh, to put your card into overdrive, automatically boosting core clocks and adjusting fan speeds accordingly. Press the button again to disable. So that's a simple one-button overclock feature, and it will also change your fan profiles. Kind of nice to have if you're not into the manual overclocking. Quick and easy way to do that. Speaking of quick and easy, here's a setup guide for quick and easy, easy graphics card installation. I'm guessing this is going to be a little bit more of a generic one. Yes, it is. So uh, if you're not familiar with that, you can also check out our How to Build a Computer video series. And now on to the GTX 780 Hall of Fame card itself. As you can see, this card has a custom-designed triple-slot cooler that kind of greets you right at the, uh, at the beginning when you take the card out. I'm going to give a quick measurement for you guys so uh, you can determine whether or not this card will fit in your computer case. So measured from the bracket here uh, down to the, uh, the right side, um, which you maybe can tell. I'm showing just a bit beyond 10 and 3 quarters inches at the longest point where the uh, shroud here kind of protrudes a little bit. So uh, give yourself, say, 11 inches just to be safe. Make sure you got a bit of extra space in there so you can get the card in and out of the system. Uh, but yeah, pretty, actually pretty good size there for a GTX 780. Some of the custom design ones I've seen are a bit longer than that. Uh, apart from that, you've got your uh, dual fan uh, power, I'm sorry, your dual fan cooler uh, right there at the top. We've also got a, a custom de design shroud right here, uh, metal and plastic here, although primarily plastic, which does keep the weight of the card down, which is kind of nice. Uh, might pr provide a little bit less droopage uh, when you actually have it installed in the case. Um, apart from that, uh, you can see probably below the fins a pretty substantial fin array, uh, again providing cooling for that. And then uh, something that I, a design style that I, I kind of like here is that uh, uh, Galaxy has actually made this card or made the cooler, I should say, removable via simply uh, removing these four screws here, uh, which provide the contact with the GPU. So the rest of the cooler actually sort of floats out here. You can kind of see a bit of separation there, down there towards the end. Um, and uh, basically, it's still providing the uh, adequate cooling as it, it will be pushing air across the fins and down over the power delivery components on the PCB itself. Uh, however, it does also provide a much simpler method of removing that cooler, and that's kind of a nod to overclockers out there who might, uh, as, as well designed as this cooler might be, they might be interested in just taking it off immediately so they can go with something uh, such as uh, a water cooling solution or uh, even an exotic cooling solution such as liquid nitrogen or liquid helium. The PCB, which you can see here at the back, very distinct. Uh, it's very rare to see white PCBs these days, and the uh, development or the production process for it uh, is a bit more complex um, than uh, your typical black or green PCB. Uh, but apart from that, it is completely custom designed. You can see some of the power del delivery elements right there. You can see the Hall of Fame uh, logo, which they've emblazoned on the top of it right there. And uh, then if I flip over to this side, you can see some additional cooling. So uh, for instance, we've got uh, an aluminum heat, heat sink right there, also providing some heat dissipation from some of the power delivery. You can see a copper base plate right there where the uh, four heat pipes make contact. If I flip around to this side, you can get a better look at those heat pipes them themselves. Pretty cool uh, design, I would say, for the heat pipes. I, I kind of like the cards that have taken the heat pipes and sort of integrated them as, as an aesthetic element as well. Uh, by routing these over, you get a pretty cool look at those. And then you might also notice the Hall of Fame 
which is currently upside down. So if I flip it back to this side, this is sort of the uh, view that you might get of the card if it's actually installed. In your case, so you'll be able to see those heat pipes. You'll also be able to see that Hall of Fame logo. And this will light up when the card is powered up. So uh, pretty cool design element there as well. Down here at this end, you can see your white PCI Express graphics power connectors. Two 8-pin ones of those. So again, make sure you've got at least a 600-watt power supply um, with the 12-volt uh, rail rating that uh, I mentioned in, on the box, which slips my mind off the top of my head, but there it is. Uh, and then moving right along, let's talk about the uh, rear of the card right here. So um, first off, uh, all of your video outputs. So you got your dual link DVI connection points right here. Uh, bear in mind that the top one here is digital only. Bottom one is digital and analog. So if you are going to be using a DVI to VGA adapter, use it on this lower slot. It won't work on the top one. They also have a HDMI 1.4 out as well as DisplayPort 1.2 out. Uh, a bit of uh, spacing right there for some uh, air to escape the card uh, and, and your case. Uh, and then right here is that switch you can use to automatically overclock the card and give it some uh, power er, er, and change your fan profiles uh, to correspond with that to provide cooling for the uh, overclock. And again, just simple push button on and off for that. And now for a closer look at the card, this is simply plugged into our Newegg TV test bed that we have running right now, which might not necessarily fit the color scheme, but uh, at least you can get an idea of the card plugged in. So uh, here's a look at the fans. Right now the uh, switch on the back is in the default position, so the fans are spinning at a very uh, quiet RPM. Not, I didn't want to say slow, but they're definitely very quiet. You can barely hear them. You can see the uh, Hall of Fame logo there on the shroud, and then also right up here on the top, the Hall of Fame logo, which is currently lit up and glowing, although our lights are on, so maybe you can't see it quite so well. Okay, here's a look at the Hall of Fame logo, which is still glowing, and now the lights are off, so you can probably see a little bit better. And it has a bit of a pulse effect to it, so it will kind of fade and then uh, light back up when the card is on. And that is going to wrap it up for this video, guys. Once again, we've been taking a closer look at the Galaxy GeForce GTX 780 Hall of Fame Edition with the custom cooler as well as the custom white PCB. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. If you enjoyed this video or found it useful, you should share it with your friends and maybe hit the like button down there. Also, subscribe to Newegg TV if you want to be appraised of all of our newest tech videos as soon as they're released. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.